And how do we better manage them? By knowing they're going to pass, you know, and disappointment is the greatest learning curve. Accepting a disappointment and understanding why we're disappointed. Usually it's because we've had an expectation or a hope. And I don't want to sound like a doomsdayist, but abandon hope and expectation. Get rid of them. Because all they're going to lead to is resentment and disappointment. Just kind of accept that what's going on is the best it's going to be. And if you get an added bonus, great. But you know, I know Mother's Day is a big one for a lot of people. And I fell into the trap of it this year of getting really disappointed and hurt and resentful and upset because my kids didn't. Why? Because I had an expectation. And the reality is they're just doing the best they can too. Disappointments come in so many forms every day, whether you miss a train, whether you, and like, and so, so does the joy. But I always think when I'm having a joyous moment, enjoy it, because it's gonna pass. Disappointment's the same. It's gonna pass as quickly as the joyous moment does. We don't, it's time doesn't stagnate, it moves. So know that it's a disappointment. No, it's not gonna kill you. Learn from it and move on. You know, they're so quick. I always think, I remember when I was working in hospitality and we had this motto, and it was, you won't be thinking about this at the end of the day, will you? And that used to get us through, because if you were dealing with some absolute twit who was trying to make your life hell, and in that moment it's all consuming. And you think, oh my God, I just... And at the end of the day, when you're sitting down for knockoff drinks, are you thinking about that person? No. Nope. And that's what disappointments are. They're passing moments to be learnt from. You know, and it's not usually about the other person, it's about you. What did you do to create the disappointment? Because you set it up more often than not. I do anyway.